players of Germany into lane eight. In one Darian Townsend for South Africa, their record holder in this event, Marcin Cieslak of Poland. The Polish record holder set a new record of 159.77 to get here. Rodriguez of Brazil almost going the wrong way in this new presentation system. Michael Phelps in lane six, fresh off the 200 fly final earlier in the program. The Olympic champion, Orahata of Japan into lane three. Out next door to Phelps, Lochte. I wouldn't quite see it as versus Phelps in the semi. I think they'll work together on this one. The defending world champion, Lochte in five. And the second fastest time from this morning seats, Verashto of Hungary. He's a difficult uh, Hungarian record because it's the European record of Laszlo Che, 155-18. Lochte with the 154-10, one of the few world records that he managed to steal from Phelps. So Lochte, the defending champion in five in the yellow lane, um, yellow bordered lane next to us in your viewpoint. And the Olympic champion in 2004, 2008, Michael Phelps in lane six. So, a rare outing for the other swimmers. Take your marks. A chance to swim against and alongside two of the best in the world in this event. Ryan Lochte in five, Michael Phelps in six. 200 IM. Magnificent demonstration from the two best in the world at the moment, Lochte and Phelps. Just watch and learn. Darian Townsend and Rodriguez going well from one and two, but for me, I'm only going to watch these two. Especially Lochte at the moment, coming up right at 14 metres, Lochte. Wonderful technician across all four strokes. Better technique for me is Lochte than Michael Phelps, but Phelps is a, he's a very rare individual, a unique organism built for swimming for so many reasons, and these two are stroke for stroke now as they come to the breaststroke. Lofty's got a slightly better breaststroke than Phelps. Everything's relative, of course. Lochte, more the backstroke technique for me, but he senses this long-reaching breaststroke. You can see how technically sound he is, and just staying ahead of Phelps. Phelps working off him over there. In lane two, Carvalho of Portugal moving up into third place, but it was always going to be Lochte versus Phelps. Both at the wall together, and then watch Lochte do this unusual, very unique underwater. Phelps matched them, though, as they race on the freestyle home. Stroke for stroke. I mean, the best of the rest is Rodriguez in two, but just watch how they're swimming. I mean... Well, they're not really giving anything. They're both settling now for first and second. I don't think there's any pride on the line in this semi-final, but well, Lochte's not going to let it go. I feel as though there was a bit of pride on the line. I'll take that back. I think if Phelps had come back at Lochte, Lochte would have gone. Uh, I still hang on to the thought that uh, they worked it together. They had a plan, and uh, yeah, there was an edge in it, 156-7. But so control, look at the breathing. I mean, it's just not heavy at all. I mean, just so conditioned, but also, of course, Phelps a little bit uh, puffing because, uh, you know, 200 fly, the excitement, the relief. And like you, I don't think he's the silky technician that Lochte is. He isn't. When you, when you look at the videos of these two, and there's plenty of them uh, on the internet these days, you really want to keep your eyes on the underwater videos of Lofty. And uh, they've got some great camera work for both of these swimmers. Go and have a look. Now, here's a good opportunity. Look at the hand underneath the belly button of Michael Phelps compared to a slightly straighter action from Ryan Lofty. And Lofty's the one you want to copy if you had a choice of copying the two. Result confirmed then, a 56 and 57, well ahead of third place.
159. Three men getting under the two minute uh, on 159, but well away from Lochte and Phelps. And of course, in the first semi final, they had to make sure that not only winning, but they had a very positive time. The second semi finalists come in with all with 159 points. There are seven out of the eight swimmers in the second semi who are national record holders. And they're going to have to pull out a very good time. And we hope that James Goddard there in lane seven for Great Britain is able to do that and uh, join the likes of Gandhi and Lowe in moving into a final, which is tomorrow night, of course. I'm sure you've picked up the pattern. Here are the eight swimmers then for the second semi-final. In lane eight, Gal Nevo, the Israeli record holder out of an American program. So again, starts, turns, and those little skills all in the back. Che Laszlo. Well, the Olympic silver medalist, not in the form of his life, almost on the way back from uh, a big layoff. Three times the European champion, though. Goddard, the British record holder, with a 157-1-2. Pointed out the times from the first semi. It's going to have to swim hard. Diego Carvalho of Portugal, their record holder, and a new record of 159.5 to him. Vaitautis, Janosaitis, the Lithuanian record holder, 159.43 from the heats was a new record. Marcus Rogan, super cool, still going. The European silver medalist, uh, European champion in 2004 and 3 for Austria. Backstroker medalist Kenneth Toe in 5 for Australia. One of the faster times from the heats. And uh, Thiago Pereira, the Brazilian record holder, fourth in the final two years ago, is 157.82, was the fastest time from the heats chasing a tough record of 155.55, which he holds. Pereira then, he's seen the 156s. He should be the man of the second semi, but uh, you never know the shape, the form, and also the strategy of Marcus Rogan. Quick off the block then, James Goddard in seven for Great Britain. Double Commonwealth Games gold medalist from Delhi last year in the 200 back and 200 medley. He's a versatile swimmer, Goddard, and he's going to have to be at his best to make it through to tomorrow's final. Going strongly in the middle, Pereira, who swam so well from the heats this morning, fourth in the world, fourth in the Olympics. So all the quality really with Pereira, and he's leading Laszlo Che from lane one and as you say drew che with his head down working towards london i see really feel as though he's just using this as an event on his way through to london so we're not expecting che to be at his best but even when he's not at his best he's still better than most i hope that is the case che over there the shaved head in lane one on the far side turning first to Pereira at 53 6 9. good first half now the breaststroke, Kenneth Toe in the yellow hat there in lane five, cutting down on the breaststroke. You can see the legs not quite as powerful from Pereira and the pure breaststrokers, Rogan. Although he's uh, a backstroker, he has a very strong breaststroke to come into the, the medley reckonings and going well, Goddard moving up into a very strong challenging position as they get to the end of the breaststroke and head for home. Pereira, Goddard, Rogan, one, two, and three. Pereira with a very good underwater section. Where is Goddard? He's dropped off the pace with that turn. Again, we need to learn from, you know, what's there as a role model and the kind of errors that we are making. Rogan in three, chasing it down at the end. Out there, Che coming back into some kind of life and some kind of form. He might even take the touch. He does. Che then, 
Wonderful finish, 157.86, but blowing very hard, the Hungarian. Blowing very terrific swim from Che, and Pereira had a terrific third turn. I mean, he's magnificent around all of the turns, if you saw on the fly to back, and that breast to free was amazing. His turns were terrific, came out half a body length, clear and faded to nothing, Pereira, in the end. Goddard's been working hard on his turns, Drew. I mean, you, you called it here, but it's something that they've identified here and Sean Kelly is coaching Stockport. And they've said to compete with the best in the world, we've got to get on level terms. I think Pereira's turns are terrific, though. Well, Dennis Spursley has put out an edict that, uh, you know, and they've given all sorts of technical support. They were talking about that at the top of the programme. You know, to work on the starts and the turns, but... Uh, I've been talking about this for years, this is nothing new, I mean, they just keep... Well, we've been talking about it, but they don't seem to have uh, picked up on it. I think it's maybe more difficult than we uh, give him credit for, to really nail those turns when you're up against people like Lofty Phelps and Pereira, who's obviously terrific, but Pereira, 158-2, he went with 57 in the heats, I mean, he's playing a dangerous game if he thinks he's going to ease in and make it through comfortably, because if Goddard had out-touched him, and that was easily possible... Well, he's lucky that there was 59s for uh, a bank of them from the first semi, as you see here, there, the last four tore down to Carvalho. They're just repeating their heat swims. And it's important that you get faster. You build up as you go through your event. And that's as much mental as anything else. Lochte heading the way then from the qualifiers. Phelps in there. That's a dangerous one, too, again from the Americans. James Goddard into sixth place with that 158.5. He has a 157.1 record, remember. Rogan also looking cagely dangerous at 157.74, perhaps for a minor medal. Men's 50 breaststroke final, an early look, and I build.